Hello friends, so I am back again after 3 years of my first video on this channel. This is my second video. Finally, I have got some time to, uh, you know, in this lockdown situation, in this COVID situation to, you know, create a video for the people who understand physics and students who are basically studying uh, physics for uh, you know obvious reasons obvious academic reasons and uh, I hope you all are safe in this COVID situation which is you know affecting uh, the entire world at this point in time so let us begin students and uh, you know what my video has my video has some physics you know which is um, uh, somewhere related to our daily lives uh, and this is the intention of all my future videos also and the video that I shot in the past on Doppler effect and um, you see a background here and this background has some phenomenal lightnings happening. These are lightning bolts and they, this video which you see in my background has been shot by my friend Anukram. I want to thank him for, uh, for giving me this video and this video actually inspired me to come again on YouTube and speak something on lightning. So I will be telling you three facts which many people don't know about lightning. The fact number one is you see two types of lightning in the sky. The one is which is less brighter one, very thinner one. You can see some someone's out there in the sky and one is a very brighter one, the brightest in the sky and they have lot of illumination around them. You will see just one passing through my heart, say this one, right? So what happens is the one which is the lighter one that comes down from cloud onto the earth and it is called a step leader because the first electron which comes out from the base of the cloud towards the surface of the earth that creates a funnel of ionized air and through that funnel this entire step leader comes down. You might be seeing in the background that some step leaders they die down in the middle of the sky and uh, they, they never reach the surface of the earth right but you see some brighter ones which i think one just passed through my heart here so these brighter ones the fact is they don't come down from cloud to the earth but they go from earth to the cloud and they are not called as step leaders they are called as return strokes the lightning which makes us afraid the moment we look at it just a little glance on this lightning which has huge amount of illumination around it is not coming from the cloud it's going from the earth surface onto the cloud and we call it return stroke this is the most dangerous one and the rate of flow of charge in this one is extremely high extremely high and sufficient enough to kill a human being fun fact too after thunderstorms something you might not have observed because you may be living in cities and there is a lot of pollution and cars and exhausts and air conditions, air condition uh, machines and everything out there, the factories, the industries, the, the water pollution, the air pollution. If you, if you go in villages after thunderstorms, there will be a peculiar smell in atmosphere. And this peculiar smell is called as the smell of ozone gas. Basically, when lightning strikes in air, air contains oxygen and nitrogen molecules. It ionizes the oxygen molecules and O2 molecule gets converted into an O3 molecule. The smell that we have in the atmosphere post thunderstorms, that is the smell of ozone gas. But if you ask people out there in villages that the, the, this is a very fragrant smell and where does it come from, they will tell you it is mitti ki khushbu. It is the smell of the soil, the fragrance of the soil post rain and post thunderstorms thunderstorms which is just a myth but the reality is it is the smell of the ozone gas and it smells really nice and fine number three benjamin franklin you all must have heard about him the father of electricity he invented a special type of a device which was called as lightning rods lightning rods are used on the top of the buildings they have pointed edges and uh, they basically you know they absorb all the lightning into them and then take it to the ground without making the building to effect or get damaged due to this lightning he advised the king george of his time that why not put these lightning rods on top of the palace as well as the ammunition sites 
but uh, he faced lot of opposition in his advice and people said that a lightning rod would only you know attract more lightning and would make the building more vulnerable to the damages caused by lightning and this would be a risky thing to you know even start with but you know the king went with faraday's uh, sorry franklin's advice and uh, and what happened is they installed those lightning rods on the palace roof on the ammunition side roof and after few days when the lightning struck it caused a very little damage right uh, today today as on date you know from our experience we know we know well that you know the opposition that franklin was facing was absolutely right and uh, lightning rods do attract lightning towards them but <clears throat> i don't know i tried to research it out but i could not find whether it was the intuition of faraday or whether it was the intention of faraday to keep the lightning rods that day that he installed on the palace and the ammunition sites to be thicker in area of cross section because if we have a thicker area of cross section the resistance of the lightning rod becomes very less which means it can absorb lots and lots of flow of charge or lots of lots of current through it and send that entire thousands and ten thousands of amperes of current into the ground isolating the current within itself and confining the current through the lightning discharge within itself without affecting the building that worked for franklin for obvious different reasons which franklin had never hoped for the only thing he said to the king was that if he installs a lightning arrestor or a lightning rod on the top of a building it would just decrease the potential difference between the cloud and the building and lesser the potential difference lesser will be the current which is going to flow but this did not affect the value of the current much but the greater amount of current which came from the discharge got directly into the lightning rod without affecting the building because of its thicker cross section the question is was it his intuition to select a thicker cross section conductor for the lightning rod or was it his intention so whatever it was he was lucky and he was a great scientist so with these three facts i say goodbye to you do like this video and subscribe this channel for more and more videos and exciting videos on various phenomena of physics that i am going to share with you goodbye and thank you